<laughs> now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you huskies! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog Yukon King as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Try this first thing tomorrow. Treat yourself to the breakfast cereal shot from guns. That's the one and only Quaker Puff Wheat or Quaker Puff Rice. Just pour out a bowl full, crisp and fresh, right from the big red and blue package. Add milk or cream, top with your favorite fruit, and dive in. See if you ever tasted anything so swell as these giant king-size kernels of premium wheat or rice shot from guns. Yes, tomorrow morning, <laughs> enjoy this breakfast treat, Quaker Puff Rice or Quaker Puff Wheat. The girl held her mount to a trot as the trail began to climb. She was watching the opening of the canyon high above when suddenly three men rode out of the woods at the side of the trail. Their faces were covered by bandanas. Oh, 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 oh. Right up, sister. Oh, oh, there. Hold up, men. That's where you think you're going. What? Up to the canyon. Well, maybe you haven't heard the canyon's a mighty unhealthy place. What do you mean by that? Just what I said. All right, I... I won't go any farther. I'll turn around and go back. We could use your horse, boss. Yeah, it's better than this car you... This horse doesn't belong to me. Then you won't lose anything when we take it. You can't. How would I get back to town? Walk. Yeah, it's <laughs> downhill. It'll only take you a couple of hours. I won't let you have it. Won't. You better get out of that saddle fast, Wait, wait, sister. wait a minute. You're new in Gold Flats. Yes. What's your name? What difference does that make? Answer me. It's Ann Conway. Conway? Yeah, I thought it might be. Well, that changes our plans. You're not going back to town at all. Oh, yes, I am. Hey, what, what, what is it? The girl wheeled her horse and started down the trail. The movement was so sudden that the outlaws were taken by surprise. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Then they started after her. But in that instant, a volley of shots rang out from the wooded hillside, the bullets kicking up the dust in front of their mounts. Oh, 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 oh. Quick, the other side of the trail. Make for cover. Get up, get up, get up. The outlaws turned off, urging their horses up the bank until they had gained the cover of the trees. As they disappeared from view, the shooting stopped. Lower down on the twisting, turning trail, the girl was urging her mount to its greatest speed. And it was not until she had reached level ground that she drew rein. A moment she thought that she was safe, and then she heard hoofbeats close behind. A man riding a chestnut stallion raced around a bend and swept down on her. Before she could get her own mount started again, the chestnut was ranging alongside, and the rider had grabbed the bridle. Oh, oh, easy, does it. Oh! Wait, you're not one of the men who stopped me. That's right. I'm the one who stopped them from coming after you. Those shots? Yes. Oh, I didn't realize. I thought they were shooting at me. You're all right? Yes. I suppose I should thank you. No need. But I want to warn you. You shouldn't be riding this trail alone. Why not? You have to be told after what happened. I'm going to report what happened to the Northwest Mounted Police. They'll see that those crooks are captured. Uh, until they are, you'd better take my advice. As a matter of fact, Mr... What's your name? Does a name matter? Well, mine seems to. When I told them who I was, they were going to take me prisoner. But... And your name must be Conway. It is. And how did you guess that? You and your brother own the old mine up in the canyon. At least you'll own it for the next two weeks. We'll own it for longer than that. You're going to start working it again? Yes. That's why my brother and I have come here. I see. 
How do you know so much about us? It's general knowledge your uncle left you the mine. It's also well known it hasn't been in operation for nearly a year. In two more weeks, the canyon becomes government property again. Not if the mine has worked. No. But can't you see it might be to the interest of certain people to prevent the mine from being worked? People who would like to stake claims up there. You, for instance? No. <laughs> My business isn't prospecting. Perhaps you don't have any business. Perhaps. You're being very mysterious. Why? I'm sorry. That is my business. Oh. Well, I can only assure you that I'm not interested. I want to thank you, of course. But as for your advice, to keep away from our own property, I'm going to refer that to the police. At once? Yes. Well, we probably won't be seeing each other again. Too bad. I'm beginning to understand. Are you? You're on the same class with those others. Well, am I? It looks that way to me. I've said thank you. Now, is it all right for me to say goodbye? If you want to leave, why not? Goodbye. Get up, boy. Get up. The girl rode back to town, left her horse at the livery stable, and walked down the main street to the hotel. She found her brother in the lobby checking through some papers, and she told him the story of her encounter on the trail. When she had finished... I asked you not to go up there without me, Anne. You were busy with a lawyer. And I have to find out what condition the house is in before I'll know what to buy. You could have waited until tomorrow. What's the difference, Ned? They simply have stopped both of us. Those men don't want us in the canyon. The question is, what are we going to do about it? How can we get word to the Northwest Mounted? That's easy. Oh. There's a couple of Mounties coming in the door. We're in luck. Oh, come on. Well, just stop here. Just stop here, Harry, and we'll go on. Well, that suits me. You, King, you'd rather camp out than spend the night in a hotel, wouldn't you, boy? Sergeant. Yes? I'm Ned Conway, and this is my sister, Ann. I'm Sergeant Preston, and this is Constable Burton. How do you do? How are you? I'd like to report a hold-up, Sergeant. Hold-up? Yes. Three masked men stopped my sister on the canyon trail about an hour ago. Let's, uh, let's go in the dining room where it's quiet. This way, please. All right. You have your notebook, Harry? Yes. Mm -hmm. You can describe them in, Miss Conway? Fairly well. They won't be serving supper for another half hour. No one will disturb us in here. If you'll sit down, Miss Conway. Thank you. Now then, from the beginning, please, tell us exactly what happened. Once more, Anne told her story, and Constable Burton made notes on her descriptions of the men. When the sergeant heard of their reaction to Anne's name, he questioned Ned closely about the ownership of the mine and his plans for working it. Then he let Anne go on with a description of her escape. Well, I wasn't going to let them take me prisoner without at least trying to get away. I wheeled my horse around and started down the trail. I only had a little start. I heard them coming after me, and then I heard shots. The outlaws were shooting at you? No, someone sh was shooting at them from the side of the trail. Well, that stopped them. And then later on, this other man caught up with me. What other man? Well, the man who had done the shooting. Well, of course, he grabbed the bridle of my horse and pulled him up. But he only wanted to tell me how dangerous the trail was. I wouldn't have been able to escape if it hadn't been for him. Well, what's funny? <laughs> Nothing. It's a little strange how things work out, that's all. Perhaps I can describe him. Really? Slightly over six foot. He was in the saddle. I don't know how tall. Curly hair, small scar above his right eye. Why, yes. You know him? Constable Burton and I are looking for him. I see. Well, wait until it's dark before we go after them, Harry. They must be either in or near the canyon. They'd be able to see us coming up the trail while it's still light. That sounds okay to me. You can leave the matter in our hands, Conway. I promise you, no outlaws are going to stop you from working your mind. That's fine, Sergeant. But you and your sister had better stay right here until you've got word from us. The canyon's safe. Don't worry. We don't want anything to do with crooks, do we, sis? I should say not. Although, well, it was only the masked men who did anything wrong. You've I mean... uh, given us all the information we need, Miss Conway. We'll find them, and if we manage to catch them tonight, we'll report to you tomorrow. The sergeant and the constable waited until it was dark before they saddled their horses and rode out of town. King trotted along at his master's side. He had watched the two men checking their guns, and their low, earnest talk told him this was a duty assignment. There might be danger ahead. King's sensitive nose searched the night wind for any possible threat. The sergeant watched him constantly. King will let us know whenever we get near a camp. He's a great dog. But all the way up the trail, King could find nothing wrong. And the opening of the canyon was reached without any trouble. 
There was no moon, but the stars shed enough light for them to make out the opening of the mine and the rambling log cabin near it. Oh, Blackie. Oh, 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 easy now. Steady. We'll leave the horses here, Harry. That's a good idea. It must be rocky inside the canyon. There's no sense in letting them know we're coming. There may not be in the canyon. The cabin would make a good hideout. The mine would be better. I don't see any lights in the cabin. Let's go. On guard, King. The cabin was choked with underbrush, and only the trail gave easy access to the mine and the cabin. But the sergeant chose to keep close to the cliff wall. Their progress up the canyon was slow. They had covered less than a hundred yards when King stopped. What's the matter, boy? King turned and looked back at the opening of the canyon. Someone must be coming. Yes, they're riding hard. Shall we try to stop him? No, we'll see where he goes. Sergeant, that's someone from town. How do you know? I couldn't make out his face at all. When I went to get our horses at the livery stable in town, I noticed that white horse. It belongs to the owner. What about the rider? Well, I don't know. Norman's a much bigger man. He could have rented the horse. Who has business up here this time of night? Uh Uh-oh. He stopped in front of the cabin. Yes. There he goes inside. What? He's dropped to the ground. I thought I saw someone else in the doorway. Come on, ready with your gun. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Oh, man, it seems like one thing you can't be sure of is weather these days. Boy, I... <clears throat> if you ask me... You? Hey, I didn't see you come in. Oh? Who are you? I am the weatherman. Weatherman? Oh, boy, you're the fellow that can tell me. Me? Sure. What's the weather going to be like tomorrow morning? Well, it, it depends. Huh? Well, what's it going to be like? Sunshiny, rainy, hot, or what? Could be... Well, look, can't you tell me for sure? Young man, speaking off the record, that is, you can be sure of only one thing tomorrow morning. And what's that? Hot, rainy, or sunshiny day. I say nothing makes a day like a breakfast of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice with milk or cream and fruit. Oh, you go for the breakfast cereals of wheat or rice shot from guns. Do I? I eat a big bowlful every morning. Summer... Fall, winter, or spring. Regardless of the weather, huh? You bet. They help supply food energy the year round. Right. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice furnish extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Yep. (laughs) They're good for you. They're G-O-O-D good, period. Remember, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are shot from guns to make them crisp and tender. Yes, these king-size kernels are actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them bigger and better tasting. They're shot through and through with bang-up nut-like flavor, too. Ask Mom to get both kinds. Eat the wheat one time, rice the next. Quaker puff wheat and Quaker puff rice. Shot from guns. Now to continue our story. As the sergeant and Constable Burden were making their way up the canyon to the Conway Mine, a man rode past them. They saw him dismount in front of the cabin, and a moment later he cried out and dropped to the ground. The sergeant and the constable hurried toward him. I swear there's someone inside that cabin. Keep a close watch on the windows. I'm going to see how badly this man's hurt. Shall I go inside? No, not yet. Just watch the windows. How is he? Alive. Someone cracked him over the head. Harry. What? This is Ned Conway. Whoever's inside, hit him. King sniffing at the door. Whoever's inside, there's a friend. A friend? King would be growling if he weren't. I'll see. Open in the name of the Queen. Sergeant Preston. And King. Jim Stewart. Yes, and who's that with you? Don't tell me I knocked out one of your men. Friend of ours, anyway. I'll bring him inside. Hello, Constable. Hmm? Oh, hello, Jim. We knew you were somewhere around. 
You got the message I sent by the Indian. Yes, and the sergeant and I started right away. There's a girl in town who's seen you. The Conway girl. There's a cot by the window, Sergeant. This happens to be the Conway girl's brother. What? Didn't the girl tell him to keep away from here? She did, and so did we. He promised to stay in town. I don't know what brought him up here. We didn't expect to find you so close to the mine, either. Well, my camp is near the top of the cliff, in a cave. I can see the whole canyon from there. Something happened about an hour ago, and I decided to investigate. What do you mean? What happened? The boy's all right, isn't he? He'll have a bump on his head, that's all. What happened? It was just after dark. I heard someone ride into the canyon. And then a little later, I heard some yelling. Now, that was unusual. Max and his crew never make any noise. So I came down. Only got here a few minutes ago. The door of the cabin was open, so I came inside, and then almost at once, this guy came riding up. Huh? Well, I didn't know who it was. I didn't want any of the gang to catch me. When he started to come inside, I hit him with the butt of my gun. He's coming, too. Oh, my head. Hello, Conway. Uh, who's that? I can't see. It'd be dangerous to light a lamp. Sergeant Preston, then. The sergeant. Oh, thank goodness. Why did you break your promise? Why didn't you stay in town? Anne. Anne? Yes, it was about 7 o'clock. She hadn't come down for supper, and I went up to her room to warn her she'd be late. The dining room closes at 7. Yes, I found a note here. Uh, I can't read it. What's it say? Well, you'd said you were looking for the man who'd saved her from the bandits. She said that out of gratitude, she felt she had to warn him, to give him a chance to get away. Oh, what do you know about that? I thought she didn't like me. You're the man? Yes. When we said we were looking for you, she thought you were a crook. Isn't he? No, he's a detective from the States. He's after one of the men who's hiding out in this canyon. Max Mattern. He's wanted for murder. I picked up his trail, followed him here, and sent word to the sergeant to come and arrest him. There's a murderer in this canyon? There sure is. And he has three cutthroats with him. As a matter of fact, they're working your mind. But Anne, what about Anne? She must have been the one you heard right up here, Jim. I'm afraid so. Where are Max and his men? In the mine. And they've taken the girl prisoner. It looks that way to me. Well... When do we go after her? Yes, you've got to save her. We'll do our best, Ned. What's the best way, Jim? We can't just go in there and shoot it out. She might be hurt. Any ideas? You've been around. You can tell us all about the mine. I can do that, all right. There's one entrance only a few feet from here. Yes, we've seen it. The canyon takes a bend up a little way. There's another entrance around the bend. Oh, that complicates things. Have you seen the inside of the mine at all? A couple of times. The two main shafts lead back to a natural cave... It's a big place, and that's where Max and the others are living. Where do they keep their horses? The woods at the top of the canyon. They'd have to have them to make a getaway. If we seem to leave the upper entrance of the mine clear... Seem? Tell us more about the tunnels. There's nothing much to tell. The first one, the one that starts just above us here, is fairly wide and high. It leads straight back to the cave... The entrance to the other one above the bend is pretty well hidden by underbrush. They may think we don't know about it. If they heard us coming along the main tunnel and wanted to escape, they'd use the second one. What do they use for light in the cave? Candles. But I doubt if we could get close to the cave without being heard. Oh. There's an echo in the main tunnel. Kick a pebble and it sounds like a landslide. Naturally, they'd put out their lights if they heard us coming. We could carry our own light. Give them a target? I don't get it. Now listen, this may not work, but at least it's worth a try and we won't be shooting blind. We must be able to... A single candle cast great flickering shadows on the walls of the cave inside the mine. Anne Conway sat on the floor near it. Her hands were tied behind her back. Max, Rafe, and Keg were facing her. You're stupid, the whole lot of you. What gives you that idea? You want this mine for yourself, but you've been working it. And that holds a title for me and my brother. We ought to thank you. Who knows we've been working it? I do. Yeah, you do. Stupid of you to find out. You don't suppose we're going to let you tell anybody else, do you? There's... There's only one way to stop me. Yeah, I know that. I say, get it over with. Yeah, what's the use of talking? What's the use of wasting time? I'm not. We've got to let her live for a while longer. As bait for a trap. A trap? For who? Figure it out for yourself. She's got a brother. When she don't go back to town, he'll come after her. Well, all right. So he comes and we'll be waiting for him. What do we need the girl for? Listen. Someone's coming now. Probably Jake. I've had him standing guard at the entrance. That's you, Jake? Yeah. Boss, you better get ready for action. It's here. Good. Now, wait. I guess it was her brother. He comes riding up to the cabin. He starts to go inside, then he yells. 
Did you hear him? No. Somebody was inside the cabin. Not only that, but a minute or so later, a couple of other guys come running up. Well, why didn't you let them have it? The boss told me not to. But anyway, I couldn't see good enough. I heard them running, that's all, and then their voices. They're inside the cabin now. Well, let's get them. Oh, wait. How many? The guy that rode up and three others. Maybe only two, but I, I think there's three. Put out the candle. Okay. Uh, what do we do? Wait here for them? Yeah, and when the right time comes, the girl's going to bring them straight into the range of our guns. We'll be able to hear them coming through the tunnel. We'll fill that tunnel full of hot lead. What about the other tunnel? They won't know about that. It's all overgrown and never used. That's our ace in a hole. Our getaway if we need one. Now quiet, everybody. Not a word. Jim Stewart led the way through the tunnel with Constable Burton close behind him. They placed one foot in front of the other with infinite care. We're getting close to the cave entrance. Why are you feeling along the wall? There's a big rock that juts out from it. It'll give us all the cover we need. Easy. Find it? Yes. Now stay close to the wall and no bullet from the cave can hit you. All set? Yes. Now... According to the sergeant's plan, we let them know we're here. Pretend you're walking. Put your feet down hard. Help! The girl. I don't care what you do to me. You can't stop me from warning them. Yes, stay there. Don't come Shut up! Here. Hey, what are they doing to her? Boy, those... <laughs> We've got to stick to our plan, Harry. If we leave this cover, they can't miss us. Ready with your torch? Yes. Light it. The two men were carrying pine torches... The ends wrapped in rags and soaked with coal oil they had found in the cabin. Now they lit them, and as the light flared up, a volley of shots rang out from the cave. But Jim and the constable were safe behind the cover of the rock. And as soon as there was a lull in the shooting, they threw their torches into the cave. Instantly, their glare brought the outlines of the rocky room into vivid outline, and the outlaws scurried outside the ring of light cast by the torches. Don't shoot low. You might hit the girl. Right. Inside the cavern, Rafe, Keg, and Jake were pressing their faces against the rocky floor, but Max was using different tactics. He was holding Ann in front of him. Go on. Hold your fire! Try to shoot me and you'll hit the girl. I'm using her as a shield. It's true, Ned. I can't get away from him. You hear that? Of course they won't shoot. Why don't you keep the girl in front of you and put those torches out? All you have to do is stamp on them. I got a better idea. We're in the shadows. They can't make us out good. All we have to do is work our way around the cave till we come to the other entrance. We're getting out? Keep your voice down. You can't stop me Shut from up. warning them. Wasn't one crack over the head enough? I don't care. Ah, you. Oh. She's out this time. I'll drop her as soon as I get to the tunnel. You didn't answer me. Are we making a break for it? No. We go outside. Come in the other tunnel and get them from the rear. Start moving. Slow. Just a step at a time. It took Max nearly ten minutes to reach the far end of the cave. The glare from the torches did not reach this far. He had to feel along the wall with one free hand for the opening of the tunnel. At last he found it and dropped the girl to the ground. He started to run through the pitch black tunnel, but he had only taken a few steps. Something hit him. It was King, who had been crouched beside the sergeant and Ned Conway, and leaped at his master's command. Max went down, and in the next second, the sergeant had wrenched the gun out of his hand. Hold him there, King. The sergeant jumped over Max and ran to the cave entrance. He picked up Anne and returned to Ned's side. There's your sister, Ned. Get her outside. All right. I've got her. Put him up, King. That, that dog. Up on your feet. Oh, my arm. Don't. You're breaking it. Now it's your turn to act as a shield, Max. We'll see how you like it. Go on, march. The sergeant forced Max to walk ahead of him to the point where the tunnel opened into the cave. No. Oh, let me go. This is murder. There are three of them. They all have guns. When they hear us, they'll shoot. Then tell them to drop their guns and surrender. No. No. Rafe, Keg, Jake, don't shoot. The Mountie's got me. He's holding me in front of him. Don't shoot or you hit me. I'm calling on you to surrender. You're under arrest in the name of the Queen. Come and get us. It was pitch black at this end of the cave and impossible to see the outlaws in the darkness. The sergeant heard whispers and then nothing. It was King's low growl that told him they were moving toward the tunnel entrance. The sergeant snapped a pair of handcuffs around Max's ankles and thrust him behind him and down to the ground. Now, if you want to live... Be quiet. Tensely, the sergeant waited, his gun ready. And then suddenly the outlaws, thinking Max was still being held in front of the sergeant, rushed the entrance using their guns as clubs. The sergeant leaped aside and caught Rafe on the side of the head with his own gun. 
Kane jumped at Jake and knocked him down. The sergeant lashed out with a left to Kane's jaw. As the outlaw staggered back, he tried to level the muzzle of his gun at the sergeant. He had no chance. The sergeant grabbed the wrist of his gun hand and twisted it. The gun dropped to the floor. All right, you got me. Let go. Get this dog off of me. I'll take your gun first. All right, boy, watch them. Harry, Jim, bring torches. Oh, my head. Don't move, any of you. A moment later, the sergeant saw Jim Stewart and Constable Burton moving toward him, carrying torches high above their heads. You got us into a fine mess, Max. Keep your mouth shut. Let them take us to jail. They've got nothing against us. That's right. You can't prove anything, Mally. Only attempted murder, as far as you three are concerned. And Max won't even stand trial. What do you think of that? Why not? He's as guilty as we are. It was his idea from the beginning to move in here. He won't stand trial in the Yukon. I won't. No, Max. I've got something better waiting for you. Jim Stewart. It's Lieutenant Stewart now. You're coming back to San Francisco with me. And when you get there, you'll hang for murder. Easy, King. We have all the evidence we need to send these three to prison. And Max will pay for his crime in the States. As far as we're concerned, boy, the case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's adventure. Discover why Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice win the praise of many a He-Man Hollywood movie star. Try wheat or rice shot from guns yourself at breakfast tomorrow. These crisp, tender, king-size grains are delicious. They're good for you, too. Furnish restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Just remember to get the original crisp, fresh wheat or rice shot from guns. Always buy the big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are never sold in bags or bulk. Listen Monday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of... The missing code. King and I set out to trail the men who had kidnapped Pete Fraser from his cabin. Unfortunately, I made the mistake of leaving Pete's wife alone and unguarded. As a result, I later found myself facing the guns of three desperate men who were using Mrs. Fraser as a hostage. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Monday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. The breakfast cereals shot from guns. Here's good news for dog owners. You can now get the famous Kennel Bar dog feeding bowl, and it compares with bowls up to $3.50 value for just one dollar and four kennel ration labels. This heavy gauge plastic feeding bowl is 15 inches long, serves water and food separately. It won't slip or tip over, and it's easy to clean. It's the new improved method for feeding dogs. Get your valuable Kennel Bar dog feeding bowl today. Send one dollar with four kennel ration labels to Kennel Ration, Chicago, 77. This is Jay Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs> <laughs>